My name is Nate Johnson, and this is Wrench Sense. So your car, your truck is running badly. You don't know really what to do next. So um, you're getting, I'm sure, all kinds of advice from your uncles and your grandpas and their lawyers. And Drogo, come here, Drogo. This wants to be in the game, I do. Okay, go away. Do they know what they're talking about? Yeah, I don't who knows. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Um, probably not. Now let's cut. Let's cut to be your grease warmer. See, if your grease ain't warm, your car can't run properly. Ain't got no gas in it. Don't waste your time. Just take it to a place, uh, auto parts store. Almost all of them will put a scanner on your car and pull a code for you, and they'll even help you in diagnosing the problem. They want to sell you parts. It's absolutely in their best interest to help you diagnose your vehicle so that they can turn a profit. Um, some vehicles, you don't even need a scanner to pull codes. As a matter of fact, I made a video in my channel. If you look in my list, uh, if you have a Chrysler vehicle with a digital odometer on the dash, you can pull your codes without a scanner. One thing I should tell you that if your check engine light on your dashboard is blinking when you're driving your vehicle, stop driving the car immediately. Don't drive it. Because what is happening is one of your cylinders or more than one is misfiring so badly that it's dumping raw fuel into your exhaust system. The temperatures in your exhaust go way up and you can cause damage to your catalytic converter, which is probably the most expensive component of your exhaust system. So let's say you've already done that. You have your code. You have uh, P300, for example. P300, it's a misfire. There are other codes associated with that, with the P300, the 301, 2, 3, 4, depending on how many cylinders you have. That code is either going to tell you that A, you have a random cylinder misfire, or B, it's going to tell you which cylinder you're misfiring on. So let's say your code is a random cylinder misfire, P300. Um, P300 codes can be difficult to diagnose. There are a couple causes of a random cylinder misfire that you can look at. Generally, the first thing I would do if, if you're having any of, the, any of the codes like a P300 or 301, 302 is just start with the tune-up. Take your spark plugs out. You can look at them and I'll show you what, that, what a bad spark plug looks like. So this is a spark plug that's bad. If you see these marks here, that's carbon tracking marks on the spark plug. If you're seeing that on yours, um, they, they won't wipe off. This is a reason why you're uh, getting that misfire code. Replace your plugs and your wires. So we're replacing our wires too because the carbon tracking that we saw on the spark plug will actually create a path inside of the boot as well. If you just replace the spark plug and you use the old spark plug wires, generally you're probably going to get a recurring misfire on that same cylinder again because the electricity is following the same path through the carbon tracking that's also occurring within the plug wire itself. Most vehicles today, they do not have a distributor, so you don't need to worry about that. If your vehicle is old enough where it does have a distributor, there's other components you need to check, and there's a bazillion videos out there on uh, tune-up procedures, including one in my channel on, a, I believe that was an old 98 Tahoe, a vehicle equipped with a distributor that you can check out. My advice to you is to start there. Just replace your spark plugs and your wires. If that clears up your problem, boom, you're done. If you went ahead and changed your spark plugs and your wires and you still have that code recurring, there's other things you need to look at. Um, the next thing I would look at is a vacuum leak on the motor. If your motor has a vacuum leak on the intake side, it's it can, it can cause a P300 random misfire code to generate. What I usually do is, um, with the engine running, I'm, I'm spraying around the intake manifold of the vehicle with some carb clean, a can of carb clean or ether. When you're doing that, you need to be very careful that you're not spraying components that can cause a spark because you're going to have a massive fire, so be careful. If you're going to be spraying the uh, carb cleaner or ether, you want to spray around the intake manifold here, around the injectors on both sides of the motor, around the base of the around the base of the intake itself to look for vacuum leaks. But you can generally safely spray around the intake manifold and listen for changes in the engine idling. If you hear the engine surge or bog a little bit, if you're spraying a certain area, spray that area again and see if you can recreate it. Because what it's doing is that vacuum leak is pulling that carb clean or ether into the motor and it's causing the, the characteristics of the idle to change slightly. If you see that happening, when you're spraying the carb clean on your intake, there you go, boom, you have a vacuum leak. You should generally know around which area 
uh, the leak is occurring. Make sure you're spraying around the uh, fuel injectors. And if you see, if you're seeing that, if you're hearing the engine characteristics of the idle change, there's a vacuum leak. You need to do whatever you need to do to uh, fix that leak. So if checking for a vacuum leak does not solve the problem, another common reason for the random cylinder misfire is if your fuel pressure is lower than it should be. What you can do here is if you have one available, you can get a fuel pressure gauge and on the fuel rail of the vehicle, there's generally a little place where you can screw that fuel gauge into the fuel rail and read what the fuel pressure, where the fuel pressure is at. This is a fuel pressure gauge. These are, they can be expensive. This one is not. I don't remember how much I paid, but I'm pretty sure it was under $30. This end screws onto your Schrader valve on your fuel rail. And you would at that point either start your vehicle or cycle the key a few times. I recommend you have the vehicle running when you're taking fuel pressure readings. Reading the gauge to see where your fuel pressure is at. And then of course, compare that to what the fuel pressure is supposed to be on your vehicle. So on this Yukon, this is the fuel rail right here. This cap right here, you would just unscrew and screw your fuel pressure gauge into that. Once you get that number, you need to check and see what the fuel pressure should be on your particular vehicle because they range widely. If that fuel pressure is lower than it should be on your vehicle, that could be a cause of the random cylinder misfire code. If you find that your fuel pressure is low, change your fuel filter first. A plugged filter will cause a low fuel pressure reading on your gauge before you buy an expensive fuel pump. Replace the fuel filter. Another common reason for the P300 you can check is the spark plug coils themselves, the ones that produce the spark. Sometimes they can have cracks in them, they can stop functioning properly, maybe they're not, they're not working as well as they used to, they're not you know, whatever. If you get to the point where you're replacing the spark plugs and the wires and you're still having a misfire, check out the coils. Could be worth, could be worth checking out. It probably is worth checking out. Spark plug coils, there's many different types. There's a single coil pack. There's individual coils per cylinder. If you have a coil pack like this, this is for a four cylinder engine. See, one, two, three, four. Uh, your spark plug wires would connect here on the end of the posts. If you went ahead and changed your spark plugs and your spark plug wires. You can start examining this for signs of carbon tracking or cracks in the body of this where voltage can bleed out, creating a shorter path to ground than going through the spark plug wire into the spark plug itself. Check this out. So those are the most likely causes of a random cylinder misfire. Go through every step that we just covered and see if that helps, if that corrected the condition. Hopefully it did. If you have any of the codes, the 301, 302, 3, you know, that number is telling you the 301 is cylinder number one is misfiring. 302, same thing, cylinder number two is misfiring, and on and on and on. If that is what is occurring, you lucked out because the P301, 302 codes uh, are much easier to diagnose. You can just go to cylinder number one, pull the spark plug, pull the wire, check them out. Okay, so I guess that's a wrap. I hope you guys got what you needed from the video. I tried to make it as interesting as possible, given that it's such a boring topic so i hope you hung around long enough to see the whole thing thank you for watching down here in this lower left corner that's my logo if you click on that it'll give you the option to subscribe which i encourage you to do i have a lot more videos that i'm sure i can help you out with or also while you're down there uh press that little like button it really helps out it helps out more than you guys know um and if you have any questions or comments please i encourage you to leave them down below for me i do my best to answer all the uh comments the questions and things that i get down in the comments section so that's it thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it